morning, church. Brothers and sisters in Christ, part of the great family of God, we are grateful to be gathered together here to worship. We're here in person. We're also on Facebook Live and on WAYN 900 uh, AM and online. So we're grateful that we can gather in all these many expressions of worship. At this time, we'll have uh, the chiming of the hour. Miss Helen Alexander will play our prelude for us and bring us into a more worshipful state of being. join me in prayer. God of hope, we enter into your presence this morning with confidence that you will meet us as we worship you. Where there is sadness, bring the joy of our salvation. Where there is a sense of tiredness, bring refreshment and strength. Where there is despair, bring a renewed sense of hope. Let this place be a sacred space for us, and may we be a sacred people. Lord, as we gather to worship you in spirit and in truth, may our hearts be a, a home for holy words and songs and prayers as we devote ourselves completely to you, and we pray this in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 
Our opening hymn is found on page 298. It's When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. If you're able, please stand as we sing this great hymn. We'll join our voices together now in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. For our Old Testament reading today, we're reading from Psalm 139, 1 through 6, and 13 through 14. This is the Psalters found in the United Methodist Hymnal, page 854. Let's join our voices together as we read God's Word. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. 
You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. And I believe now it is time for our children's sermon. So Mary and the children, come forward, please. Good morning. How is everyone doing today? Hey, Brayley, thank you. Good morning. How are you doing today? You want to come sit with me? Thank you very much. You want to put it in the Zoe pot? Thank you. Oh, we got some more. Thank you all very much. Wow, thank you. Good morning to everyone here and our families at home. It is a great day to be in church, isn't it? It is great to be here today. Thank you for that. Today is the first Sunday in September, so today the children's and families will stay in um, worship together so we can share in communion together as one and as a family. So after children's time and after we pray, we're going to sit down. You guys sit. We can sit up here, Mimi. We're going to, after we pray, I've got some coloring sheets for you, and then you can go back and sit with your families, okay? Now, can we all say together our children's creed? God made me, God loves me, and Jesus wants to be my friend forever. I need to make the wise choice. I can trust God no matter what, and I should treat others the one that I want to be treated. Amen. you got to sit down. Well, this morning... You didn't have a paper? Can you hold this paper for everyone to see, this little girl on here? Can you hold this up? Since it's Zoe Sunday, um, I was going to tell you a, a, a story about this little girl. Her name is Risper. Isn't that a pretty name? And Risper's been doing great since she joined Zoe in power. My name is Evie. Is Evie? Oh, that's a beautiful name. My name is Miss Mary. It's very nice to meet you. So since we're um, doing Zoe Sunday, I thought I would tell you a story about the Zoe Empowers that we've been talking about. Before Risper, before this little girl joined Zoe Empowers, she had reached a very sad point in her life. She had lost both her parents. She had started taking care of her three siblings all by herself. And you know how old she was? Twelve. She's twelve years old. Danielle, how old are you? Danielle's 12, and imagine her having to take care of Cashlyn and Preston all by herself. Can you go show this? To, That'd be a handful for Danielle. That would be a handful for Danielle, amen. So um, she had to take care, and she felt overwhelmed with this possibility, so she asked her aunt to help her. And her aunt had claimed that she would help Risper. She said, yes, come live with me, and I'll help you. Well, but then... Risper's aunt made secret arrangements to marry her off at 12 years old. So when Risper told her aunt that she didn't want to get married, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, she didn't want to get married or leave her siblings, her aunt made them leave the house. She said, leave now. So then Risper and her three, kid, her three siblings didn't have anywhere to stay. So she went and stayed with her grandmother. But her grandmother wasn't doing well, so she couldn't take care of five people. So shortly after that, that's when Risper enrolled in the Zoe Empowered program, which is we're helping with all our pennies here. 
And through Zoe's training, Risper learned about child rights, and she, she found out that her aunt, what her aunt was trying to do was illegal. So Risper regained control of her parents' land. She built a new house. She, did, she got some farming land, and she even had a fence for her two pigs. So now Risper is in her third year of running her own grocery store and she takes care of her grandmother and her three siblings. She also infor, affords to pay the school fees so her siblings can go to school. Isn't that neat? So that is why it's so important for us to keep doing pennies for Zoe here at the church so we can help Zoe Empowers program and that teaches the young people like Risper in Kenya that she can be, grow up to be a good young lady and she can grow up to have her own store. Excuse me? Yes. This is an important thing that it could help us to go with it. It is a very important thing. You've got a very pretty purse. Oh. Wait. Right. Oh, yes. You better keep that in your purse. You might can buy a piece of gum today. All right, so why don't we go to the altar and we can pray for Risper and we can pray over the money. Can we go to the altar and pray? Let's show Evie how we do it. No, we're going to stay in church and do it. Evie, you want to sit right here with me? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for today. We thank you that we don't have to worry about food. We don't have to worry about taking care of our siblings. Lord, and we thank you for that. We thank you for all that you provide for us. Lord, we just thank you for this money that you provided this morning, and we ask that you use it where it needs to be used. We ask that you take care of all these boys and girls and their families. And Lord, as we're traveling, some of us are traveling to a baseball game today, keep us safe in your hands as we get back and forth. And Lord, I just ask as Nikki has a special day today, you just bless her and fill her up with love that she so deserves to be happy and joy and the whole family is full of happiness. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Yes, and I've got... Thank you, Mary. Thank you, children. One of the most awesome sights we can see in this church is all the children lined up here to pray. Amen? He's train them right now, teach them how they should go, and when they're older, they will not depart from it. That's what we're taught in Scripture. So thank you, Mary, and thank you all for supporting Zoe Empowers. It's, it's a good thing for us to be able to reach out, not just to our community, but around the world. And now we're going to give you an opportunity to help with the mission and ministry here in the, the church. Uh, we'll ask our ushers to come and receive this morning's offering.
Father God, we give you thanks and praise for the gifts that we have received from your children here today. You are a good Father. You always provide for us. You want us to lean on you and not on our own understanding or the own things that, that we gather for ourselves. You want us to trust in you. And so we do this. We give our tithes and our offerings. And Lord, we pray that you'll help us as a church to use wisdom and discernment to be good stewards, to help bring about your kingdom through these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this week. We're still in the Gospel of Luke. And today we'll be reading from chapter 14, beginning in verse 25, and reading through verse 33. I invite you now to hear the word of the Lord or to read along in your own Bible. And our prayer is that God will add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word on this day. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he's laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, and while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. This is the word of God. It's for us, the people of God. And we should say... Thanks be to God. Will you join me in a word of prayer over our sermon reflection? Pray with me, pray for me here today. Holy Father, we gather on this Sabbath day to celebrate you, to worship you in spirit and in truth. Grant, O God, that we might offer up to you what will be pleasing in your sight. You've given salvation to us freely out of the depths of your great love. You've poured out your grace on our lives. You've asked of us to follow after you, to be your disciples, to be your people, and that you alone will be our God. And Jesus, when we consider you and how you suffered as no one has ever suffered, to bring us this great gift of salvation, this ransoming of our souls. When we reflect on the stripes that you sustained, the insults that you endured, and the cross that you carried up Calvary's hill, we come to realize that you have asked us to carry a cross, that we too have one to bear, that we must take it up and follow you. Holy Spirit, our comforter, our guide, we ask that you would fill us anew with your power. And teach us, O God, how to count the cost of discipleship, to spend our lives in service to you. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts and minds, may they be found pleasing and acceptable to you, God. You are our rock, our redeemer, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If we were to look at the the life of Christ and and try to think about what it means to have a successful ministry, the way we frame it, uh, I'm not sure how he would measure up to that. 
Because we tend to count numbers a lot, don't we? In fact, over the past couple of weeks, I've said to our ushers, all right, now we need to, we need to count and see who's coming in attendance. So I eventually will have to report these numbers. <laughs> so who's coming? Scripture tells us here that large crowds, large crowds were following Jesus. So we might think of that as success. But then Jesus comes here to this passage today and turns everything upside down and on its head because I am sure that what Jesus had to say to that crowd probably thinned the herd out just a little bit. People found this hard. If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters and yes, even their own life, such a person can't be my disciple. Hard words, confusing words to many people over the years. What we need to understand is that the translation of this word, hate may not be the very best word to, to use here, but the word means simply that you must love the Lord, you must love God more than you love anything else. If you want to follow Jesus, if you want to be his disciple, you must love him more than anyone or anything. You must love mother, father, family, your own life less than you love God, less than you love Jesus. It's in Matthew's gospel that this is cleared up just a little bit for us. Matthew 10:37. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me, Jesus says, is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. You see, Jesus has told us that we are to love our enemies, right? To love the ones who seek to do us harm. So it would be really confusing if then he turns around and tells us that we must hate our families. So I want you to remember when you read these words, when you hear this, in this instant, it means you must love him more than. It doesn't mean that you don't love your family, but you love Jesus more than. And I will tell you from my own personal experience and as a pastor for the past 20 years, I have seen how men and women would give their hearts and lives to Jesus Christ and come to know him in a way that brings change and transformation into their lives. And suddenly where their families may have experienced brokenness, there was a renewal. Because if you love God in the way you should, you will love people rightly. And I have seen families healed because someone says, I love Jesus more than anything else. And suddenly all those relationships fall into place in a way that they should be. But this is difficult for us because it's asking us for such a depth of commitment. I'm going to say this and I'm probably going to say it twice. So I want you to hang with me because this is a, a tough concept. While every disciple of Jesus is a believer in Christ... It does not mean necessarily that every believer is a disciple. I'm going to repeat it because it bears repeating. While every disciple is a believer, every believer is not necessarily a disciple. See, there's a depth here. I don't know if you would agree with that statement or not, but I want you to think about it. I want you to chew on it this week. Do you understand what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If we understand it, are we willing to do what is required of us? There's a difference between being a believer and being a disciple. And in simple terms, it is the level of commitment that's required by both. So, okay, um, Here's a funny story, but it might help us lock into it a little bit better. There's an old story about a, a hen and a pig who are walking along the field, and there's a church across the road from them. And as they're walking along, they see someone out changing the sign for this coming week's sermon. And the sermon is entitled, What Can We Do to Help the Poor? 
Immediately the hen turns to the pig and says, I think we should have a breakfast for them and feed them bacon and eggs. And as they walk on past the church, the pig, thinking about this, turns to the hen and says, there's a problem with your suggestion of this breakfast of bacon and eggs. You see, for you, it's just a contribution. For me, it's total commitment. And that is the truth. It's total commitment. That's what Christ is talking about here in this scripture passage. Total commitment. A great crowd of people following him. Great multitudes are hanging on to him as Luke tells us. They'd heard him speak as one with authority. They'd heard him teach the divine wisdom of God flowing out in their midst. This is the living word of God standing among them. They had seen him perform miracles and heal the sick and the lame. They had even heard about and some of them had seen that Jesus has raised people from the dead. And far too many of them, they were following him because of the signs and the wonders and the miracles. And they didn't truly know him. His time was winding down. His hardest task was before him. And so he's taking this time to prepare them. His words would forever set things straight. Whoever doesn't bear a cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now that is harsh. That is shocking. That's not what the crowd wanted to hear. They wanted to hear how he planned to march on to Jerusalem and take control and kick Rome out. They wanted to see him wear a crown, not a cross, and, and not a crown of thorns. But Jesus uses this symbol in verse 27 to reemphasize the point. Everyone present following Jesus trying to understand what he was talking about, well, they would have to really wrestle with this carrying a cross. The cross was the cruelest form of punishment used by the Romans. They were familiar with it. They had seen it. Sometimes Rome, as they would enter into a city, would grab people off the streets at random and crucify them and put them up and down the road into the city as a warning to how cruel they could be. These people knew what this meant. Everyone that carried a cross was saying so long, bye-bye to everything. There was no turning back from this. Jesus uses this vivid illustration with the intent of showing them what is required. You must say goodbye to your will, to the things that you desire. You must surrender them completely to the Lord God. Now, little did they know that this symbol of the cross would become so much more than a symbol to Jesus. Jesus would bear that cruel, that cruel Roman cross. And many in the multitude that had been there, that had been his adoring fans, they would actually be the ones later who would be yelling, crucify him, crucify him. They would try to end his life in agony and shame. The term disciple appears, depending on what translation you use, about 270 times in the New Testament. The term that we're most familiar with, most comfortable with, Christian, only appears three times. In the book of Acts, we're told the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. So it makes it clear that these terms are interchangeable. I want us to be clear about this because I believe it will help us clarify the seriousness of what Jesus is saying. So let's go back to verse 27 for a second. Anyone who does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be a Christian. Not really. If the word disciple and Christian are identified as the same if you do not carry your cross and follow after him with all that you have quit claiming to be a Christian it's done more harm to the church than it's done good it's why we wear a black eye in our world in our society because too many people have taken the word Christian without understanding the depth of the implication of that word disciple 
I have surrendered all. Jesus, I, am, I struggle with myself, with my will, my desire. But as you said in the garden, not my will, but thine be done. It's a fight. We're in a fight. And the phrasing of this gets our attention when I say it in that way. If you don't surrender, don't call yourself a Christian. Discipleship is nothing to be taken lightly. And that's what Jesus is telling us about. Christ spoke these words. We read them in Matthew 10, 38. He who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Matthew 16, 24, Jesus said, If anyone desires to come after me, let them deny themselves, take up a cross, and follow me. Again and again, he says it. To be filled with the Spirit of God means that we must be emptied of ourselves. You can't be Christ's disciple unless you love Christ more than anything else in the world. It's a high cost. That's what Christ is asking us to do, pay that cost. Count the cost for which of you intending to build a tower. You, don't you sit down first and count the cost, whether you have enough to finish it? Lest after you've laid the foundation, you're not able to finish. All who see you will mock you, saying, well, you began to build and you weren't able to finish. I was standing out here this morning looking at the board of all the names of the pastors in the past who have been here. And I'm thinking back through time to people I don't even know. Many of you may be connected to them through familial ties, but you may not know some. But I want you to think for a moment a great many people who have been involved in the life of this church over its numerous years of service in this community and to the kingdom of God. Many hours of meetings and fundraising and fervent prayer have been invested in this place where the church meets for the purpose of worship and outreach. Church council meetings, trustees and finance committees, they've studied, they've projected the cost of each phase of our growth and our development. And before any work was done, I bet they counted the cost. Can we do this? Do we have enough? Will the people come along and help us in this? If our church starts a project and then we run out of money or we find that we didn't know exactly what it was that we needed, boy, wouldn't that be embarrassing part way through when the project is stopped. Folks in the community, would def they might not be talking about us now, but you let us start some building project and get halfway through and stop, they'll be talking about us then, won't they? You're going to get some comments. But I'm just talking about losing money or losing face, being embarrassed in some way. Compare that to what Christ is talking about. And there's really no comparison. Christ wants us to be sure that we're going to stick with him. That we're going to hang in there in our faith. That we're going to be able to finish. That's what Christ wants us to avoid getting part way into this and throwing up our hands and saying, I can't do this anymore. Know what you're getting into. As your pastor, I will try to make you aware this is serious business, this is kingdom stuff hearts and souls and lives rest upon what we do in ministry and reaching out into this community. Eternity is in the balance. We must take it serious. There is a covenant that we make between God and ourselves that we will give God our undivided attention. We'll give God our life, all of it. We'll hold nothing back. We'll be willing to pay the cost as we carry the cross. And there is a great reward for those who give their lives in exchange for that indwelling. When we're totally surrendered. You want to know what the most beautiful thing is? It is no longer I that lives, but Christ that lives within me. Christ prays. Christ fights the battles. Christ has the power to bring healing and wholeness into the lives of people where my alter ego, old dead Daryl, does not. A little while ago, one of our young ones was crawling up here on the altar, and I said, you know, she's just doing what's reasonable. 
Mom looks at me and I says, we're told in scripture, present yourselves as a living sacrifice on the altar, holy and acceptable unto God. This is your reasonable service. It's reasonable for us to present ourselves in that way. Now, does this mean that all of you are going to be inspired and you're suddenly going to quit your job and become a missionary? I don't know. I don't think so, but it could be somebody would. It could be somebody here right now today. You, you're wanting your life to count for something more. You know, the actuary tables tell us the, the lifespan of a person in our country right now is about 79 years of age. I'll turn 56 in a couple of months. I want whatever amount of time I have left to really matter. I want to leave a legacy. I want every day to matter in the kingdom of God. And I believe you do too. I believe that your better selves, that you want to do something that matters, something that will last, that you're willing and even eager to enter into something larger than yourself. You're willing to pay the cost. And I know that there are people around us, they are hungry to have their lives changed. So what will we do to bring about that transformation in their lives? Do you believe this gospel lesson today? Do you believe it's good news? See, when I first started with this text, I thought, man, this is hard. But now I stand before you and say, nope, this is good news. This matters. This counts. These are tough words. Yes, they are. But in your life, in my life, they can be such good news. Jesus comes asking us to pay the cost. And I believe we're willing. Take up your cross and follow him. You see, it's not about dying for Christ so much as it is living for him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Amen. We're about to enter into a time of holy communion with one another. I remind you that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. In your United Methodist hymnal, page 12, you'll find the following words, our confession and pardon. Let's join our voices together. Merciful God, we confess we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners and it proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. We'll invite you to come forward now and receive your communion elements. Continuing now on page 13 of our hymnal. May the Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, We praise your name, and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, 
he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It's poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. And we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on the gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we might be for this world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. There is one loaf. We are one body. And we all partake, share in the breaking of the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we all give thanks over the cup of salvation. Behold the Lamb of God that was slain. This is the body of Christ that was broken for you. This is the blood of Christ that was shed for you. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Holy God, we give you thanks and praise for this great mystery that you've allowed us to enter into. We feel your presence, Lord. Your body, your blood, your Holy Spirit, your power. God, help us, each and every one of us, to truly surrender to you, to be filled by you and used by you. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn today is found on page 382. It is, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. We're going to stand together as we sing this great hymn. This altar is still open. If you need to come and pray about anything, please do so. If you want me to pray with you, just let me know. I'll be happy to do that. Let's stand together.
Amen. Thank you all once again for worshiping with us today, for sharing in this time of communion. Uh, our alkalites and our crucifer, I want you to get with them, please, and thank them for the job they're doing. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful addition to our service. As you notice, one of them, it wouldn't light. Uh, so this means that each one of you must carry the light out into the world now. Amen? I want you to go out. I want you to blaze around to this world. Be light. Be salt. Bring people to the knowledge of Christ. As you go from this place, remember who you are and whose you are. Remember your call that Christ has placed upon your life. Go with boldness. Go with grace. Go with confidence, knowing that Christ goes with you. And may the world be changed because of you. Amen? Amen. Amen.